Oh, didn't stick. That was a good hit, though. Let's see if we can get him back here. Try one more time. Dang it. Didn't convert that one. There he is. I did convert it. <laughs> Not a very big one, but I had that bite and he came back for it. First little bass of the day on a spinnerbait. Not a Mondo, but take it. There you go. So today I thought I'd compare and contrast spinnerbaits versus chatterbaits. Now they're similar in a lot of ways in that they're both a skirted bait and they both have blades. And when you do your research on them, um, people tend to use them as a confidence lure, but they tend to use one or the other and not both. Uh, I think it's just people uh, develop their own individual preferences. I definitely grew up fishing spinnerbaits. Chatterbaits weren't really around at the time. Um, and so I have a lot more confidence in them, but they do differ in very different ways in terms of their action and the ways that you fish them. Uh, but they're very versatile as well. And that's what makes them have a lot in common is that they can be thrown in a lot of different situations. Um, one might be more productive than the other in certain situations. So I'm gonna go over those situations today. So I'll be comparing these two bladed baits today, throwing them off and on uh, through the morning here and hopefully picking up some decent bass and talking about how I fish them. There we go, there's fish. Decent one. All right. That's a better, better grade of fish right there. So right now I'm dragging the spinnerbait through these weeds right here. So we got some leafy scattered vegetation and it's let me pull that spinnerbait through there. And because of the wire guards on a spinnerbait, it uh, doesn't bind up in the weeds, which is why it makes it a really good uh, lure for pulling through loose vertical vegetation like grass and this uh, vertical stem weeds. All right, we'll get that fish back. Yeah, so you can see that wire guard here. This is where the blades that are mounted on a spinner blade spin. Now the blades are typically willow leaf shape or Colorado shape. The Colorado blades will spin uh, and thump at a slower speed than the willow leaf blades. Um, so if you want to be able to retrieve at a very slow speed or you want something that puts out a lot of thump, like if you're fishing at night, then Colorado bladed spinner baits with big blades, especially at night, will put out far more signal uh, than even a chatterbait. So a lot of folks tend to prefer spinner baits, especially in extremely low light conditions and at night um, over a chatterbait. But in a lot of ways, like I said, they're super similar because one of the advantages of a spinnerbait is that you can feel the blades thumping. And so you know that you're fishing correctly. You know that if you've got moss or something binding up on the blades, you won't feel it. Likewise, with a chatterbait, it's the same way. Now, some people will say that uh, they prefer spinnerbaits in dirtier water and chatterbaits in cleaner water. I've had really good days uh, 
fish and spinner baits in clear water and I've thrown chatter baits on those days and got nothing. And one of the things I think about one of the great strengths of spinner baits, um, you know, because they're skirted and bladed, there's a lot of different configurations. Um, you can get different weights and different size spinner baits. So you can really cover a lot of diversity of water types and fisheries types. Like if you're going for smallmouth bass, uh, you can downgrade the size of the to make a more compact spinner bait or if your pond or lake doesn't have giant largemouth bass um, you can also downgrade it to target those one to two pound fish very effectively uh, and then because it's skirted you can use a variety of skirt colors and blade colors you can use metallic blades to really put out a lot of flash or you can use painted blades to make a more uh, subdued uh, presentation there's the fish right there pulled it through the weeds not a bad fish That one actually got hung up on the weeds and as I pulled it through, hooked up on him. Beautiful. So how I like to fish spinnerbaits typically, and again, there's this whole idea of flexibility and presentation with spinnerbaits. You know, right now uh, we're in the fall and a big front just passed through and Air temperatures dropped by 20 degrees. Now water temps won't drop that much just because of the physical properties of water, but they did drop a couple degrees. And these fish are gonna move up on the edge of these weed beds and start feeding. Ooh, there was a bite right there that came off the weed. See I hang up on the weeds and I just pull through them. I can still feel that blade thumping, which is good. That's what I wanna be able to feel. And so I am retrieving very slowly. Um, I'm going to let that fall down, hit the tops of the weeds, and I kind of pop it because I'm fishing in 11 feet of water with weeds suspended five or six feet below me, right along this weed shelf. Then I'm retrieving very slow, hanging up on the tops of the weeds and pulling it through this vertical vegetation. I'm hoping to coax a bass either out of these dense weed beds to my right or those submerged weed beds down below in 11 feet of water but you know if it was summertime and low light warm water temperatures and they were busting on bluegill near the surface i could rip this spinnerbait fast across those the surface um, cover a lot of water very quickly and go for that aggressive bite so i have that option right i can fish it slow I can fish it fast. It's very versatile. Um, and like I said, if I had Colorado blades in there, I could fish it even slower. So here I do have a willow leaf blade, so I can, I'm fishing at this pace here. And I can still feel the blades thumping. If I go slower, that I don't really feel the thump as much. Um, so you really got to dial in your retrieval speeds appropriately. Spinnerbait tactics really do revolve around a constant retrieve. You can let the spinnerbait fall, and sometimes I've picked up fish on the fall, uh, but more often than not, I'm getting them on the retrieve. I, like I said, do often get them uh, to bite when I'll hang up on weeds temporarily, and I pull that uh, spinnerbait out of the weeds, it accelerates, you get that thump out of the weeds, and then I will sometimes get fish that will take the bait then but again it's just a slow steady retrieve i'm covering that deeper depth by just letting it fall down to the bottom i could just as easily cast and retrieve across the surface at a high speed and try and get that reaction strike i can really feel it thumping you can even make it wake a little bit if you lift upwards um, you can make it wake like a wake bait or a even a buzz bait type action by ripping it across the top and then letting it slide back under trying to get that re reaction strike but i don't expect that to be productive today 
I really think those fish are going to be buried up in the vegetation deep and that's why I'm letting it fall down there and then pulling it out of the weeds and starting a very slow retrieve. So there we go. After like hundreds of casts, there's the first time I actually brought vegetation back to the boat. Most of the time it just works its way through, it plows its way through because of that wire, it doesn't get hung up. And uh, yeah, you don't have to worry about cleaning off your lure every few casts. I'll be interested to show you what happens when I fish a chatterbait in this exact same habitat. See how much vegetation we bring back to the boat. How much more time I spend lure cleaning than uh, with a spinnerbait. Okay, I've worked about half of this weed section, so I'm gonna switch up to a chatterbait and uh, see how it does. So I got the chartreuse one here. They see the blade is on top. It's more jig shaped than a spinnerbait, but again, it's bladed, is skirted. Now I'm gonna run this one without a trailer, and that is something that's some people think that uh, trailers are an essential part of chatterbait fishing. Um, but you can catch plenty of fish without a trailer. I will fish this one initially without a trailer and then we'll add a trailer and see if we can increase our catch rate. Now, a chatterbait has, like I said, a lot of people want to compare it to a spinnerbait because of the blade and the skirt. I would say it's more close to a crankbait jig hybrid than it is actually a spinnerbait um, hybrid because of its, it doesn't really have any rotating blades, but I can feel the thump of that blade as I'm retrieving uh, extremely well. I can retrieve at slow speeds and really get a good thump. Now you can fish it just like a spinnerbait. You can cast it out and then just do your retrieve fast or slow, whatever you want. Um, and that's a very effective way to fish chatterbaits because of that blade. It causes it to wiggle. It puts out a lot of signal. It uh, has a lot of action and flash, especially on the metallic blades. Or you can fish it, kind of yo-yo it back. And that is you let it fall down into those weeds or rock structure or whatever you're fishing. You can lift up and let it vibrate and then let it fall back down. You can do short thumps, slow thumps, but I'm snagging up a lot more on that vegetation and it's limiting the action of that blade. And that is the difference with uh, the spinnerbait has that big wire guard. Now I'm getting weeds and such hung up on the hook, hung up on the blades a little bit more. And uh, I gotta be a little more mindful of vegetation. But yeah, you can fish that yo-yo. Here I'm hung up on weeds. Now I've got weeds on it. I can't get action. And so you can see already, like in three casts, I've got weeds every time. A spinnerbait is much better at pulling across the tops of weeds and getting out than a chatterbait. I think chatterbaits do okay in grass, but if there's any kind of milfoil or leafy stuff, they tend to get hung up a little bit more um, than the spinnerbaits do. The one nice thing is, is as a chatterbait is falling, that blade is can thump and uh, put out a lot of signal on the fall. It'll wiggle. And also, as soon as the chatterbait hits, you can start retrieving and the blades will engage immediately. For me it feels like spinnerbaits take a little bit of time to get their blades up and to get the lure oriented in the correct fashion. So if you're working, if you want to work a bladed bait in tight conditions and have it immediately engage, I feel like the chatterbait is a good option. So a lot of people prefer chatterbaits for more clear water, um, but Given the amount of signal that they produce, I feel like that they are just as productive in dirty water as well. I haven't got bit on this one. Might just be a color thing. I can switch up to a darker color. This chartreuse isn't uh, doing it. Well, we're going to try changing up. I'm not getting much action on this chartreuse, so maybe it's a 
Maybe it's a color thing, and we'll change up the presentation quite a bit by adding a trailer as well, which is one of the things that uh, makes a chatterbait more versatile is that you can change a trailer off the tail. Right now I just have the skirt here. So, so you can use any kind of plastic as a trailer. Um, there's some popular ones like Zaco's, uh, which is a swim bait like plastic designed to be run on chatter baits. So I'm gonna go with this black and blue and then pumpkin green. Um, you can use flukes, you can use creature baits. Uh, really anything to your heart's desire but swim baits or things that uh, create a swimming action tend to be the most popular okay let's see if we can drum up some business because this uh, chartreuse cheddar bait wasn't doing it maybe this darker color a lot of people will say darker colors uh, are best in dirty water but sometimes that smaller profile of a darker lure in clear water i think can actually make a really big difference or you can sort of go in the middle there with like watermelon or green pumpkin which is a little more neutral this will be a little bit of a mix black blue and green pumpkin on the plastic okay <clears throat> fish on the first kiss against these rocks it's gonna be a decent bass I think nope just a little guy hung up in the weeds There you go, bass on the chatterbait. Not a big one, but they switched up to that darker pattern on the uh, chatterbait seemed to make a difference. But he inhaled that thing. There you go. Sort of cookie cutter for the day, they're all about that size. That one actually hit it just as I started to pull it off of its drop. If there was less weeds, I would yo-yo it in here amongst these rocks, but I'll almost assuredly get hung up immediately. I don't want to do that. That was hit on the drop. That was a nice, nice hit. As soon as it hit the surface. That's a nice fish. There we go. That's a decent one on the chatterbait. Nice. That one hit on the drop. And that is my experience. I get more fish on the drop with a chatterbait than I do with a spinnerbait. Definitely switched up to that darker color. Seemed to be more productive than the bright colors. That's a pretty fish. So I just got that fish on just a original Z-Man chatterbait with a Yamamoto Zeiko. This is a 3 8 ounce. Oh, there's fish. Oh, he slammed that thing again, just as I started to pick it up. Decent fish. Yeah. There you go. 
Another one, nice. On the chatterbait. So interesting how like just changing that color up on that chatterbait and adding that trailer on there really helped increase the catch rate on this lure. There we go. Another fish. Oh man, it's a giant. That's a great way to end the day right there. On a beast of a fish. No matter what you use, spinner baits or chatter baits, they're great ways to cover a lot of water. They work very well in weedy and grassy areas, although I do think the spinner baits a little bit better at coming through the vegetation without getting uh, the blades all tangled up. But as you saw today, those chatter baits do a really good job of catching fish on that fall. So if you're fishing that pocket water or little pockets of deep water um, surrounded by weeds, then chatter baits are a really good option for pulling fish out of those situations. Let me know which lure you prefer when you're out bass fishing, spinner baits or chatter baits. I'll put links to the products I used today in the video below. And uh, I'll see you next time out on the water. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye, guys.